here I'm gonna I'm gonna show a little bit of unity that can actually be measured on meters. Um, I'm just gonna show you a glimpse of it. So I'm gonna turn these on. So I got them set to the highest amperage range. So the one on the left is reading current, um, input current on the input on the motor coil side and the one on the right is reading current on the uh, generator side so I, yeah I added a generator coil um, so I'm just going to start this up and show you here uh, I'll spin this because if I don't then my motor coil will get sucked into it and I don't have it fastened Okay, so here it goes. So it starts off at about 140 milliamps of input current. And I can also adjust this air gap here in between the uh, motor coil and the rotor magnets. So there it goes. The input current's dropping. Now what we're looking at here on the right is just the collapsing field. Uh, that comes shooting back out of the motor coil right here and as you can see it's not very much and for some odd reason I, I still can't fathom this or understand it but it drops it it drops I guess because the switching speed uh, becomes faster I don't know but it, it's, it's not very high as you can see but when you combine it with our generator coil I don't know if you can see that or not when I connect the generator coil up and you can see it goes way up and you can see also this isn't secured very well um, so we're going to let that, uh, I've also noticed that when this gap and this gap is nearly the same, I can achieve unity pretty easily. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm going to move the motor coil a little bit closer and what that will do is it will It'll drop the input current slightly. So now we got 35 milliamps going in. And also see, notice how the, the collapsing field has uh, changed a little bit as well. So now, here we go. I'm adding the generator coil right now. And you can see that's... Uh, getting there almost the unity uh, check these gaps maybe uh, if I move this a little bit just slightly closer so now we got 30 milliamps going in there's the over unity actually and then unity and then it starts dropping below unity Alright, so there's a quick glimpse of unity and even some over unity. And um, there's another thing I wanted to say. What was it? Uh, oh, this generator coil. Okay, what I'm reading here on the uh, output is the combination of two outputs. One's the collapsing field, I think I already mentioned that, the collapsing electromagnetic field from the motor coil, which you see, just it isn't that much. I don't know why, it should be a little bit higher than that, I would think. Uh, I think it's just the frequencies off, the natural resonant frequency of the rotor spinning and the, of the coil don't match, I don't think, very well. But uh, So we got it to 30 milliamps of current going in and so the output over here 
is actually a combination of the collapsing magnetic field from the coil, the motor coil, uh, and also the generator coil combined. So, uh, so that's the combination of both. Now I'm going to add the generator coil as well right now. You see, we got 32 milliamps out, 30 in. Now they're the same at unity, and it starts dropping a little bit. So uh, <clears throat> there's ferrite core, uh, ferrite magnets on the rotor, and of course, if you use neodymium magnets, you can generate way more. I'm using a reed switch opposed to a transistor because for some reason it just wants to work a lot better. There's no cost in doing any kind of switching. The switching's free because it's, it's just a, a magnetic field passing by that reed switch down there. And it's, it's a slight little magnetic drag. It's, I don't even think the rotor notices it at all. So really there's no, there's no cost in switching. All it's doing is it's pulsing the battery to the uh, through the motor coil and then uh, of course that spins the rotor and then it spins past the generator coil. Do it one more time and then uh, if you're a new viewer you can subscribe to this channel if you like and do this one more time. There we go. That's over unity unity. And slightly under unity. And you can see there's not even that much drag on the uh, on the generator. So thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Okay, I wanted to show you that there's nothing hidden here. There's nothing strange going on. There's underneath the table here. Um, this this is that's just a wall adapter. A couple of light bulbs, transformer, and of course the wall adapter right here. That's just not this battery isn't doing anything. This is the battery I'm using. These are just capacitor. I've, I've been running the uh, motor from a super capacitor. This is another one. It's just the battery. So you can see everything here. Um, just got the left meter on the uh, reading the input current so it just basically starts from right here the negative comes down here runs through the read switch out here comes over here to the switch to turn it on which is goes through the meter through the meter here and then the output current well the collapsing field comes off here because this is the positive going to the negative or no the positive of the battery so then over here then flips the negative goes to the negative as well the battery and the positive the collapsing fields right here comes over here uh, here and rectifying it with a diode, um, which I'm measuring the output of that plus the generator coil, which I got on a full wave bridge rectifier, uh, which I got on the negative, and then the positive, uh, positive I got coming through the meter as well to read the current, the meter. And the black part of it uh, it's going to the positive of the battery to charge it and so that's that's the whole setup hope I'm not missing anything and that's what I'm reading all right
so uh, one more time now I'm going to uh, I'm going to completely disconnect switch it off and then I'm going to connect the generator coil so you can see I'll turn it off right now now it's completely turned off no current as you can see going in at all now I'm going to connect the uh, output generator coil and you see the battery is actually getting charged with about 20 milliamps of current and it's not even connected uh, it's drawing no current in any way at all right now and the battery is just getting charged from the rotor and into the generator coil it's spinning down battery still getting charged with some current and that's what I wanted to show and that's pretty much it if I just completely stop it no current at all so thanks for watching if you're a new viewer subscribe to my channel and uh thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next video all right i forgot to mention the voltages of the input and output are exactly the same because whatever this is generating plus the collapsing field uh let's say this is a 12 you know 12 volt battery at 12.72 or whatever it is and let's say I'm generating in combination with the collapsing field of let's say uh, I don't know like 50 volts so there's a potential difference between the 50 volts and the 12 volts so that 50 volts is going to drop to 12.72 volts uh, as it's generating current back to the battery back to the 12 volts so the input and output voltages are going to be exactly the same so all we got to look at are the input and output currents and that's all that matters in this system for right now as far as a measurement is concerned so that's <clears throat> wanted to get that in there